I'm here to share a story with you about the connected car. Yes, there is such a thing as a connected car. It's a sexy story. It's got all of the buzzwords of today, the Internet of Things, the cloud, data science, analytics. But it's also about how a little bit of ingenuity can transform even some of the oldest industries in the world. And let me, let me explain what that means. That's a connected car that I'm talking about. Look at those pedometers on their feet. I'm wearing one of them. It's made by Fujitsu. It's very reliable. It has a five-year battery. It can survive even the toughest environments in the farm. And it's constantly measuring the number of steps the cow takes. And that data is being sent to the cloud, into Microsoft Azure, where there is a service that's analyzing the number of steps the cow is taking. So you know, do cows need to take 10,000 steps a day, too? Before I give you the answer, let's take a step back. Every company is a data company, even the ones you least expect, even dairy farms. Now, dairy farms have all the constraints of a modern business. They have a fixed production capacity. They have a herd that they have to manage. There's farm labor, which is very expensive. So what could a dairy farmer do? Well, there are two important controls. First, you know, he can monitor for disease and prevent the loss of herd by early detection. Second, he can improve cattle production by accurate detection of estrus. Now, if you remember high school biology, estrus is when the animal goes into heat. Uh, and it turns out that cattle goes into heat only for very short durations of time. And that's true about all farm animals, by the way. All animals, uh, they are ready to mate and have, have children only during very short windows. Well, so there is an incredible leverage point here, and let me explain that with a chart from a scientific paper. These days, with artificial insemination, the consumption rate is pretty high, 70%, which is very good. But the methods for estrus detection are age-old. For millennia, it has been the same observation. And even under best observation, you get about 55% accurate detection of estrus. When you multiply the two probabilities together, you get about 39% consumption rate. But if you could use technology, if you could move that detection to 95%, well, then, look at the improvement you get. 67% consumption rate, up to a 70% improvement, potentially, in cattle production. That's very material to the farmer. But this turns out to be a harder problem than you think. Well, estrus lasts only for 12 to 18 hours every 21 days. And that 21 days is quite variable as well. And like a lot of these things, it occurs mostly between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. So what's the farmer to do? The farmer works hard from 5 a.m. in the morning till evening, milking, feeding, maintaining the farm. And now, how do you monitor hundreds of cows in your dairy farm for the accurate detection of onset of heat? Could technology help? Could you, could you develop a heat map, so to speak? <laughs> well, so a farmer in Japan asked Fujitsu for help. Fujitsu consulted a university researcher. Based on some published research, uh, I trace this to 2005 even, uh, they created a very, very ingenious system that involved pedometers. And they built a service in the cloud that actually provides alerts to the farmer on a mobile phone. This is that system. So there are pedometers on the feet of every cow. It's connected by um, uh, radio signals to a receiver in the farm. About 300 meters away, the pedometer uh, input can be received. And that one then transmits it over the wire to Microsoft Azure. And there is a service there that analyzes and sends alerts. Well, it turns out, by the way, there is a very simple secret to detecting when a cow turns on, goes into heat. So let me explain that with a graph. This is a normal cow on a normal night. Well, let's see what happens when Betsy, the cow, turns on. The number of steps she takes shoots up. When, when the animal goes into heat, it starts pacing very furiously. And that's actually a day-over-day -day comparison of the number of steps taken by the cow. Turns out to be extremely accurate, 95% accurate for the detection of the onset of heat. 
And the optimal time for artificial insemination is 16 hours later. That's when you get the maximum conception rate. That's when AI meets AI. Well, it's 95% accurate. And you know that remaining 5% turns out to be, some of it turns out to be when, when the cow actually skips the farm and escapes. Well, the Fujitsu researchers found something else, something else very fascinating. Turns out there is a window around that optimum time. And if in the first half of that window, if you pr uh, perform AI, artificial insemination, you are likely to get a female. And if you do uh, AI in the second half, you're likely to get a male with 70% probability. Amazing, isn't it? Now the farmer has yet another control. Depending upon whether he needs more milk cows or bulls, he can choose to inseminate at the right time. That's amazing. Now, uh, it turns out this uh, estrus detection is a, a needle in a haystack problem for all types of farm animals. There's tremendous amount of variability. For example, while cattle has a short duration of estrus in a 21-day period, you know, horses, their estrus cycle varies between 10 and 27, and the duration of estrus itself can be two to six days, anywhere in that. So we're just really starting to scratch the surface of what might be possible with Internet of Things and constant monitoring of farm animals. Well, Perhaps you could even learn more from your Fitbit than you thought you could. <laughs> well, in God I trust, but all others bring data, said Deming. So let's see some experimental data. Fujitsu ran experiments in 11 farms at the beginning, early trials. And this table summarizes the data, but you don't have to know, look at all of the data. But they found about 12% improvement in the calf production on an average. Some farms had as high as 31%. Now, this doesn't even include the labor savings, the enormous labor savings from not having to monitor the, calf, the cows in the dairy farm constantly, and also the health detection. And that, by the way, is yet another fascinating thing. Fujitsu tells me that they can detect about 8 to 10 different types of diseases from the patterns of footsteps and counting the pedometer steps, um, 8 to 10 different types, because they have different patterns of behavior. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, data, analytics, the cloud, they're all very powerful, right? But think about this. Very often when we talk about machine learning, analytics, and so on, we sell ourselves on the data, the algorithms, and so on. But here, it started. It all started with a question. It all started with a farmer asking, why can't there be a better way? It all started then with the technologies following up and designing a system that was extremely easy to use for the farmer. A cloud service, the Internet of Things, a robust pedometer, connecting all of that up into an engineer system that can now be used by farmers worldwide, and then innovating on top of that. So it all starts not with data and analytics, but with an idea, a question. Thank you. <laughs>